This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at fbhp.com. That's fbhp.com for Farm Bureau Health Plans. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and our special guest for part two, Coach Brian Callahan. Hey, thanks for sticking around or coming back or However, we're trying to sell this. Lingering. (laughs) Lingering. We're hanging. We're hanging. hanging. We're continuing the conversation with the coach. Let me ask you first and foremost, what does Brian Callahan do for fun during this four- or five-week period? Generally, in most years, I'll play a little bit of golf. I'm not very good at it, but it's my one one hobby I have that I enjoy playing. Haven't played any golf this year, obviously. Um, been a little busy. Yeah. And then my in-laws, um, for the last, they've had a house up in Lake George, New York for about 20 plus years. And so every summer since I've met my wife, we spend some time up there. So I'm a big pull the boat on the lake and be on the lake and not do much of anything. Is that one of the finger lakes? No, it's actually, it's uh, just south of Lake Champlain. So it's Vermont, New York border. Oh, okay. So right oh. up, just straight north of Albany, about 45 minutes. And we've learned something. Well, educational yeah. Yeah. on it's, the OTP. Well, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. Like it's up in Adirondacks. So it's, it's you know, it's it's kind of hilly and it's really pretty. Oh, really that pretty sounds place. just fantastic. How in the world do you sh- turn your brain off of all of this stuff? Think you, about all of don't. the details that are just living <laughs> in your head yeah, right now. You don't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you don't. Great. Um, you do try to get. A, a breather from it. Um, but I would just say there's, it's sort of a constant thing when, you, as I'm learning, when you're in, 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 in the head coaching role is you're always thinking about something. Um, it might be as simple as, you know, the, the schedule for an off day in training camp. It might be the a roster thought, but you're always, there's always something going on. What, how do I want to message this part of training? You know, all, all those things are sort of always churning um so yeah i don't think it ever really shuts off it's probably the best way to put it there's no real break um my mind is always moving but i would say there is you know this time of year particularly you get a chance to at least step back and maybe focus on some things that you know like your family <laughs> which <laughs> you is know, solid yeah. yeah yeah they're important yeah. Yeah. so we we met your family yep. when you came in after you'd accepted the job nora yep and she's Nine? She'll be turning nine in July. Okay, so nine. And then Ronan, mm-hmm. who we really met. Oh, yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, he's... Yeah, you think he... He's yeah. rolling, man. You, you think he owns the place. I, yeah. Well, and, and he I does. I think he did, yeah. I, I think he did that <laughs> yeah. day. So from, from January to now, yeah. roughly six months, mm-hmm. how has he reacted to Dad being the head coach full-time? What new developments have gone on with him? Um, you know, I, I think that not much. I don't think they really... They get it. I think that they love coming to the office. That's their favorite thing to do for whatever reason. That's just, that's like they all they want to do is come here. And I'm like, guys, I don't really want to go there right now. <laughs> um, but they just, they they think it's like the coolest thing in the world. And that's how I grew up too, is playing around in football facilities forever. So that part's fun. I think they, they don't really get it though. I don't think they really understand um, probably until the season starts. I think they'll they'll have a better picture for what that looks like. But um, I just think they're more just excited. To, they just want to come color around the whiteboards and run around the building. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's, that's, their, that's, their, that's their main goal. Well, going to work with Dad, regardless of what Dad does. It's cool. It's, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's Kids a great thing. Yeah. yeah, It's a cool thing to do. Well, speaking of dads, now that you work with your father, when, when you have kids especially mm-hmm. – when you have free time, there's a lot of going to visit the grandparents, especially sure. during off times. And for the longest time, you and your dad kind of had competing schedules and they lined up perfectly. And so this was the time that you had to go see each other. Mm-hmm. Do you have to vacation with your parents anymore? Or is the show kind of over you know, in that fun, regard? No, the funny thing is actually all my um, my brothers and sisters are all coming here, which is great because we normally we would take like a week vacation as a family. Somewhere we'd meet somewhere in the summertime. And so it's convenient because they all have to come to Nashville for a couple for a couple of days. But um, I don't know what that's going to look like in the you know future year. Like 
I will say this either for all the day, like we're together all the time and for all the time we spend together, like there's definitely, I might go two or three days without even like seeing my dad, if that makes like mm-hmm. just in, but we're all, we're kind of all working. And so, right. um, there's, it's not like I'm, I'm, you know, constantly with him all the time. Um, and so there's like all of a sudden yesterday, I think it had been like three days since I sat down and talked to him and I just went and sat in his office and I was, you know, it's like, go talk to my dad, not, not going to talk to coach, coach. Going to talk yeah. to, you know? And so it's, I, I don't think it's, it's really hard to articulate, I think, but there is still like a, a work relationship. And then mm-hmm. there's, you know, father, son, yeah, grandparents. Um, and so I, I future wise, I'm sure we'll still do something, but, um, my kids are the ones that are way more excited about it because grandma and grandpa are right down the street and huge. My yeah. daughter, my daughter, and my 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 mom and my daughter have like a really kind of cool relationship, and so she's fired up. She can't wait to oh, that's be the ten best. minutes from grandma's house, like fired up. Yeah. Oh, so that part's cool. Lot, I love that. Yeah. A lot of cookies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Of co- <laughs> lot of cookies. A lot of fun. A lot of yeah. fun. Oh. So, in watching your dad at practice. Mm-hmm. I think the thing that I enjoy most is how all the coaches and former coaches who come to practice have to go watch your dad work. Yeah, all that's of the, them. All they that's the all first thing they have to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean they they don't want to watch the quarterbacks and the receivers or the defensive backs. They'll get to them. They're excited, but they have to go watch Bill Callahan coach. Yeah, not necessarily watching the offensive line per se. <laughs> they have to watch him coach. What a compliment. I think it's pretty incredible. Um, he's earned that right, you know, uh, over the years. And um, he's gar- he's garnered a lot of respect in the coaching community. Um, people idolize him, um, as strange as that sounds to me. Um, but but he's he's deserving of it. I mean, he's 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 one of the there's there's guys that get to certain points in their careers. And, and we've always I've always defined him as sort of like master coaches. Or oh, these yeah. guys that that are, are so good at what they do and, and done it for so long at such a high level. Um, they they become almost it's like a a legendary legendary almost in a sense and and more so just because everyone watches and they just have so much respect for for what he's done in his career and so all these guys come in and visit and, and come seeing the former coaches they just want to go watch him coach because he's he's got such a reputation as that as a coach that's worth watching you know um, and I think it's an incredible compliment that guys in our profession uh, feel that way about him and look up to him that way that that's the that's what they want to go see is they want to go see him coach and. It's a huge compliment. It's pretty cool. So when the huge family comes into town, mm-hmm. are you going down to like Broadway to the honky tonks? Are you Broadway? I, Broadway. You don't is, know? No, I, I'm sure my, my younger sister she'll probably go down there. <laughs> um, and now I, I don't know if I'll be out on. Broadway. Would you, you might you not get, see me. Would on you Broadway get recognized much. yet? Is yeah, there, a little oh, bit. Okay, not, so not that, not a lot. I I still can run. You know, relative. I'm relatively anonymous. Maybe I'm relatively. I, I'm like. Anonymous looking to, I don't know if it's, no, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'm like, it's not, uh, I, I've not had. We many, haven't done your TV show yet. I'm not, yeah, yeah I'm yeah, not we, like real we, forward yet. Yeah. We haven't played a game on television yet, which is, which is good. I'm enjoying that part. It's not crazy. I, people, I feel people look at me. Um, I feel like they like recognize me, but not sure where, like why. I've so seen I, you I before. feel, I feel like, I feel vision sometimes. Like it's really, it's a, <laughs> it's a very new thing for me and it's sometimes very awkward, but. Um, I feel people looking at me, but they don't say anything, and it's almost, I'd almost rather someone like say well, something. Well, because but, they think here, – here's what they're thinking. They're yeah. thinking, now, is he our new pastor? Yeah. <laughs> or is, is that – Is that the weather guy yeah, on a, channel whatever? I know I've seen yeah. this person somewhere. I've seen him. Somewhere. Seen him. Yeah. Look like somebody. Is he on the plane with me the other yeah. day? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. That's what it feels like. Is, but the best thing about being here – is that people will come up to you in the grocery store mm-hmm. and they'll just say, "I just want want to let you know I'm behind you." You know what? I've had a f- I've had a few of those, and, and it's that so part's great. really cool. I mean, the welcome, the respect people show has has been pretty phenomenal. Every, everything that I would have I've heard about, you know, that the southern hospitality and the and the, the friendliness and the kindness, all those things have have shown up in most of the interactions I've had. And you know, people don't people have been very uh, respectful very complimentary and um, they sort of say hello and kind of keep it moving. And I think that's, that's pretty cool. They're kind. Yeah. 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 And polite. Yeah. I would say all those things are mm-hmm. true. I, um, the random one the other day I was, I went to a, in a coffee shop over 
by my house and I walked in and, and, um, Taylor Lewan was in there and you recognize him cause yeah, he stands out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, and I had just done their, their, their podcast a couple of weeks back and I just said, Hey Taylor, what's up, man? And like nobody else, he took him a second to recognize me too. <laughs> you know, he's like, Oh, Hey, Hey, Hey. Uh, <laughs> and, but you know, the, the place was pretty crowded and, and, sure. and, and nobody else really said anything. You know, so I was like, Oh, He's like, you're just kind of moving around town, huh? Pretty anonymously. I was like, I guess. And so that's that's kind of what my experience has been so far. I haven't had a whole lot of interaction that's, you know, uncomfortable. Have you actually been able to do things in town? Have you seen any of Nashville outside of Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park? I have. I have. Not a lot, but I have some. <laughs> um, been out a handful of times, a couple of restaurants. I mean, the food here is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I've been has been a, a excellent meal um a little bit of that i've i've been i went to i've been to a couple preds games i've i went to i'm still looking forward to going to the baseball stadium uh watching some baseball which is kind of my one of my summer pastime go watch some baseball but it's a um, really good park that's yeah, what i've heard a, i've it's heard it's fantastic it's a really good park um and then i've i've been i've been to we've been up to the 12 30 club a few times because ran had gone there but ran that's kind of ran's spot he was at a bunch and so i've been there a few times i have not really like dove down into the broadway honky-tonk scene much you've got to do a concert at the ryman mm -hmm. that's on the list you've got to that's do on it the list i've heard that's yeah. unbelievable and you've got to go to the grand Ole opry yeah i do I, I mean it is it is so special yeah. that it has the history and tradition and when you're there you're like i'm so glad i'm here yeah, you yeah. get it when you're there. Mm -hmm. You, you yeah. feel it. That's is it. Kind of like I feel like the Ryman and that and the Grand Ole Opry, like Red Rocks and it's like yes. in color. Yeah. Like yes. Red Rocks is a place you just you just need to go experience. Doesn't matter who's playing, right? Mm -hmm. You just got to go experience it. And it's 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 just that it's an experience. It's one that you. I feel like those are the types same type of places that you got to check them off the list. Exactly, one hundred percent. Side note: I went to the Station Inn, oh. down at the Gulch, which is like this old. Yeah. Uh, old, like, it's a bluegrass place. Okay. And it was one of the coolest. I mean, it was, we just randomly walked in there one night and really good band was playing. And my wife's a big bluegrass fan. And we sat there for like two hours. Yeah. So I kind of sat off in the corner, just watched these, these guys play bluegrass. It was phenomenal. It was in. And you can do that anywhere. But you know what? Here. That's my biggest disappointment with myself is every time I go hear live music, I think, why don't I do this more? Mm hmm. It's one of my favorite things about this city. I think I'm going to, I mean, I think I'm going to do quite a bit of it. I, yeah. Because I love, I love watching music. So I'm, I'm all in on the music. Oh, right? yeah. I love it. We're all in on SeatGeek. <laughs> SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Ugh. That's what I'm supposed to do. That was really That's good. That's called a sick. Yeah, it was a good one. Just Whether you're buying, uh -huh, top notch. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, like live music, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So Titans fans can fan. Let me ask you too about how you're going to play the preseason. Mm -hmm. How do you, in your coaching philosophy, from an evaluation standpoint, see preseason games? Um, preseason is important. I think I've learned some lessons over the years. We, you know, we kind of adopted that LA Rams mentality when, when we got to Cincinnati where we didn't play our starters at all. Um, we had some injuries with, with Burrow, um, last year where we were going to play our starters more because we've, we had been a kind of slow starting team out of the gate. And that was one of the things we felt like might help us is playing in the preseason more. And, um, obviously we weren't going to put our guys out there in Cincinnati without Joe with them. It just didn't make sense. Um, so I, I believe in those guys playing some in the preseason. I think it helps, it helps you get ready for the opener. So the opener's not the first time you're, you've been tackled or the first time you hit a game speed. And even though the preseason game speed is not the same as the regular season, it's still playing live football. And I think starters playing a little bit in those games, I think is going to go a long way. The joint practices will be important. Um, where we get a ton of work against a team in a more controlled environment. Um, but you'll see our starters play in the preseason. With that mindset, how quickly do you want to establish kind of who those 53 are going to be? You know, every year your, your roster, you probably know who, let's call it 40-something. You know, you got <laughs> a pretty good idea. And then there's a handful of battles um, at some spots, some of the depth spots, some of the special team spots. Um, that that are are truly up for grabs that that somebody could take, um, 
And so you got a pretty good idea of what you're going to look like around most of your starting positions. Um, but then it's just a matter of what is the, those, those last couple pieces of the roster that people are fighting for. Um, but you, you certainly want to have a, you know, when you're having competition up front, for example, offensive line, you, you like to get that solidified sooner than later because you want those guys to, to bank reps and play together. Right. Um, so that's, if you're, when you talk about that, certainly you'd love to have a, your five starters pretty solidified sooner than later. Um, but I think a lot of our battles are going to go probably well to the wire in training camp. I mean, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for guys to compete and uh, have a chance to, to earn themselves a job. You mentioned the five starters on the offensive line. Do you feel the same way about the 22 starters overall, getting them established as quickly as possible? Yeah, you hope so. There's also the other part of it is that you hope that, you know, there's there's guys that are still, even though their starters are still preparing and fighting like they have a job that's up for grabs um, because that competition makes your team better. And so you hope that there's enough competition across the board for spots that um, it really pushes those guys to to not be complacent either, to know that, you know, the minute you show up here and you think you got it all, you know, usually you you get beat out by somebody. <laughs> and uh, But the competition is good. And so I hope that you want guys, you want to play guys together, but you also want the same uh, mentality of, of guys that are trying to earn themselves spots, even if their spot is solidified, um, you know, by contractual status or, or how much they've played. But uh, I hope that we get a bunch of really good competition. At 53 guys on the active roster, when you go to Chicago, you'll certainly have the ability to call up people from the practice squad. But I, I wonder this, being a first-time head coach, do you already have in your mind – how the game day 48 will fit together, or do you have to wait and see how the roster is set before you can make your mind up about that? Um, I have a, I have an outline of what I think it'll look like. And then there's going to be those weekly decisions that come up. A lot of it's going to be in, in the special teams realm where who's going to contribute there and what's their value on the roster as the, third running back or the fourth and fifth receivers or, you know, where, where are those guys playing roles? And, um, that to me is usually where that gymnastics comes into play, um, before you get to the injury part, which hopefully there's not too many of those, uh, or knock however play wherever you can knock. <laughs> um, yeah, you should have been around here the last three yeah. years. <laughs> we'll knock on anything. <laughs> we, yeah. And so that hopefully is, um, you know, when you get to that point where you're, you're, you're juggling injuries and rosters, that, that part will, uh, kind of solve itself. But, um, the special teams part is really where the unknowns are at this point and then where those guys are going to fit in what roles. Uh, and then do you, you take to take some guys that maybe are really good special teams players, but maybe not going to help you on either in any position. Um, but their, their role as a four phase special teams player is going to be critical. And so you may have to take that guy over a guy you think is, you know, on game day, you might have to sit one guy down. That's not going to help you as much because they're only going to play seven to 10 snaps when this other guy's going to play, you know, 20 special team snaps for you too. So it kind of goes, there's a lot of juggling when it sure. gets to that. Well, you mentioned the special teams component and mm -hmm. there have been some changes to what special teams is going to look like in 2024 um, in a variety of different ways. How does that impact the calculus of what you are trying to put together and maybe who you choose to put where? Yeah, I think, you know, the kickoff obviously is going to be a, a huge change. I don't know what that's going to look like yet. You know, I think we have to get pads on and play and experiment. I think the preseason will be fun to, to watch and see what people do. They won't show you everything. But um, I do think as we get more comfortable with what that kickoff rule looks like, um, you can start making maybe some personnel changes. I know Colt has messed with some lineups, but, um, you know, the types of guys you might use in that spot might be different now than they used to. So hard to know for sure, but I think we're kind of open to the possibility that may change how you configure some of your roster because those spots are different now than maybe they used to be uh, on the kickoff and kickoff return. So uh, that part will be exciting. I'll, I'm not a, you know, I'm an offensive guy and the quarterback guy, so I spend most of my time there. And special teams has never really intrigued me much. Um, but the new kickoff, to me, is intriguing. Um, that part's really fun to kind of see what that's going to look like. Well, who are your returners? Yeah. Do you go with a small, quick guy or a bigger guy who can break a tackle and go? Mm -hmm. Who needs to be on the kick cover team? Who needs to be on the return team? Because you actually have a real chance to block somebody now, which yeah. has – before, it was very hard to get a real block on somebody. And then the discussion of who the kicker mm -hmm. needs to be based on the fact 
that as they played this out in the UFL and, and overall, the actual kicker had to make a lot of tackles, mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot more than, than normal. And some teams are even talking about using a safety who has had kickoff experience maybe in high school yeah. as the kicker. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure we have one of those. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if we have a guy that can kick and cover. Uh, I know, but there is some guys out there that have. Sure. Uh, was it Justin Reed? In Justin Reed in Kansas mm-hmm. City. I, I think yeah. their special coordinator might have came out and and even said they've practiced with him in that role because you you gain an advantage. You know, you gain an extra tackler, um, and the kicking is a little bit less about the distance now, and so you don't have to have someone's got a big leg. You can just as long as they can get the ball in the air and, and put it in the landing zone, you've now gained an extra cover player. So I would venture to guess there's a handful of teams that will do that, um, and, and maybe that's. You know, now all the scouts are on the road this fall looking at safety kickers. You know, <laughs> you know, guys that's guys that got some flex, some roster value. I the guess, old but, fullback punter. Yeah, from back, <laughs> from back in the old so, days. Yeah, but I don't think it's that far fetched. I think if you if you found one that um, could kick it well enough, um, it's certainly an advantage. And I think the teams are going that have one a guy that could do that will that'll work out. Um, you know, to a a small advantage for them. Brian, how much of that do you think you'll learn about in the preseason? Will anybody show much? No. Okay. No, I don't think they'll just kick it in the I end think zone. No, I think they're going to show. I think people want to see. I think the the general consensus that I've gathered is that most teams want to see it be played out, and and in, in its most basic form in the preseason. There's not going to be a bunch of scheme, but I think just to see what it looks like live, um, because you're not practicing that live. Uh, at any point during practice, um, I think the, it'll be fun to, for the joint practices to see that against a opponent. Um, but I don't know what that's going to. I think I think you'll see a lot of returns. I don't think you'll see the the schematics that some of the you know whatever the wrinkles people are going to have. I think you'll see a lot of just kick and cover, so people can just watch it play out and see what it's going to look like. The pundits who love the geekery like I do. The geekery. Well, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what it is. That's a great word. I, I mean, it is, yeah, I mean, it is, it's a <laughs> – I, I mean, it's, it truly is because I, I I think in listening to them, they may be right that early in the season we're going to see a lot of returns. Yeah. And as people start to see the returns become the first offensive play of the game for real, yeah. that by midseason people just be kicking in the end zone and giving you the ball at the 30. Uh, I think there's going to be uh, – um, a risk reward. And I think there's going to be teams that maybe become really good at it and you become concerned about that and say, well, we're better off. The chances of them getting to the 45 or the 50 on the kickoff is, is pretty good because they're, they got a dynamic returner or they have a, their scheme's really good, whatever that may be. Um, you're going to see a lot more, I would venture to guess, uh, teams that maybe not feel as confident in what, what they have versus what the other team has. And you may, just say they're, they're going to concede the ball at 30 and just kick it in the end zone. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Can I ask one more kicking question, Amy? Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> please. So, we love kicking here. So, Folk is yeah. back, and he's almost 40. Mm-hmm. The young man from NC State, Narvison, is here, and he appears to have quite a leg. Yep. Is that going to be something we need to watch when preseason starts in a few weeks? Um, I don't, no, I don't I don't think Nick's at, at any, any real risk of – Losing his job, I think that it's good to have two kickers in camp, and I think obviously um, Nick has kicked for a long time, and so you are in for us as organizationally, you always want to have um, the succession plan in, in place for guys that that have, have played as long as, as Nick has, and and Morgan Cox too, as they get oh, yeah. to, you know these guys have they're very established and they've been great players for a long time at their jobs, and um, you always want to have a in the back of your mind, okay, well, what, what happens next year if Nick decides this is it for him or if he, you know what I mean? That's, you always have to plan for that. Sure. Um, and so having, and kickers, I've generally felt like young kickers need, um, you know, with the exception of a handful, they, they need time. They need to learn how to kick in the NFL. A lot of guys, you know, you see these guys kicking camps for two, three years and they finally get an opportunity. So um, you sort of always having that uh, almost training ground for, for the next guy. So I think that's going to be a, a part of, having two kickers in camp too coach brian callahan enjoy the rest of your off season thank you for both parts of this we have enjoyed having you with us so much always a pleasure for amy wells and head coach brian callahan mike keith thanks you for listening and watching the otp welcome to